Hi, welcome to IELTS Dragon. My name is Julius, and I'm a band 9 achiever for the IELTS speaking exam. So today, let us uh, prepare some ideas for the recent IELTS speaking part 1 topics for the months September to December that are available online. But just a disclaimer, it's not 100% guaranteed that you're going to get one of these topics in your actual IELTS speaking test. But like I said in my previous video, we have nothing to lose. So let's just study these topics and prepare some ideas so that we can be more than prepared or more confident when we take the actual IELTS speaking test. Without further ado, let's begin. Let's talk about applications or apps. Well, there are so many kinds of apps. And in my opinion, the best thing that we can do here is to categorize them. First, we have utility mobile apps. These are the apps on our smartphones that we don't realize uh, that they are apps, like calculator, uh, flashlight, and weather. And the second one is lifestyle apps. Um, these refer to um, dating app, music, fitness, food, and travel. And the most common ones, we have social media apps and news apps. Now here, it's great if you know the category of the app or the apps that you're using uh, because that can help you express yourself more. For example, one of the questions here is, what apps have you recently used? If I get this question, I can simply answer like this. Well, lately, I've been using utility apps such as a calculator because I've been learning so much math these days. And also the weather app as I can't uh, go out without knowing the weather. Aside from those apps, I've been using news apps as well because I want to be updated with the latest happenings in the world. See, the answer doesn't sound ordinary. It's not a common answer that most test takers say. Now, if you use your creativity, you will be able to express yourself more. And that's very good because you are utilizing your English communication skills even more. And that's great because the examiner will be very happy with that. Now, if you don't use your creativity, if you aren't creative, then most likely your answer is like this. Well, I have been using Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter because I enjoy interacting with my friends. It's also my way of uh, entertaining myself when I get bored. Well, there's nothing wrong with the answer. However, that's what most students uh, say or answer. <laughs> you need to step up your game if you want to get the highest band score. Next public gardens and parks. All right, we need to understand the difference between public gardens and parks so that we have a better understanding of how we can answer questions for this topic. When we say a public garden, it simply means a public institution that keeps collections of different kinds of plants for the purposes of public education and enjoyment. For example, a botanical garden. While a park, according to Oxford Languages, is a large public garden or area of land used for recreation, or an area devoted to a specified purpose such as national park, amusement park, or children's park. So based on those definitions, we can say that most public gardens are parks, but not all parks are public gardens because, you know, there are many kinds of parks. All right, so when talking about public uh, gardens or parks, prepare some adjectives to describe them. For example, we have lovely, beautiful, large, local, or national. So I got a band nine on my first attempt at taking the IELTS speaking test. I got it because I completely understood how the examiners evaluate the students' English communication skills. And of course, I prepared strategically because I always think that the IELTS speaking test is like a game. If you know some strategies and if you know how to uh, put them in place, 
you will surely be able to get the highest band score. I have here three students who achieved their target band scores, 7.5 and 7, for using my reviewer or ebooks before taking the exam. Now, my ebooks or reviewers are student centered, which means the student's needs are met. You can also get a perspective of a test taker as I myself, being the author of these reviewers or ebooks, was once a test taker like you. My ebooks or reviewers are good for those students who are very busy, who don't have time preparing for some ideas for each topic. These reviewers are also good for those students who don't know how to tell a story in part two. Also for those students who are having a hard time discussing their answers in part three logically. And for those students who force themselves using many advanced words and many idiomatic expressions in their answers to the point that the way they express themselves becomes so unnatural. They sound like a dictionary. So you really need to avoid doing that. Otherwise, you'll get stuck at 6.5 or 6 over and over again. Now, if you're interested in my reviewers or ebooks, I can give you samples. Just send me an email and see if you need my ebooks or not. Okay, so let's continue our lesson. Let's talk about concentration. So ask yourself, in what situations do you need to concentrate? Maybe what? Maybe when you are working, studying, or maybe when you are meditating. How do you feel when you are concentrating on doing something? Are you always uh, calm? Are you a bit stressed out? Uh, what is it? Uh, when you think about these things, you will always have something to share with your examiner, whatever questions about concentration that he will ask you. Anyway, some helpful expressions that you can use about concentration. We have intense, deep, or great concentration. A lack of concentration. Elapse of concentration. Try using one of these expressions in your answers. But take note, you have to use them in a more natural way. Do not force yourself using any of these expressions just for you to sound smart. Let's move on to science. Well, this topic is easy because basically we learned science in our primary and secondary school. However, if you aren't prepared, this will be a very difficult topic. So as early as now, recall those branches of science. For example, botany, the study of plants, biology, the study of life, and many more. Okay, now let's uh, look at one example question here. The question is, do you like science? Again, uh, science is so broad, so you must have at least some basic uh, knowledge about those branches of science. All right, when you say, yes, I like science, so how will you expand your answer? And if you say, no, you don't like science, uh, how will you uh, present your answer then? The strategy is you have to think at least one or maybe two uh, branches of science as your reference when presenting your answer. For example, my answer is like this. Yes, I do because science is life. Everything around us is a product of science or involves science. From the food that we eat and the way our body digests food to the way we move our body or the way we move things. Honestly, when I was a student, science was my favorite subject because I found it interesting. With that answer, I was just thinking of the different branches of science, such as botany, when I talk about food, chemistry, when I talked about eating and the way our body digests food, and physics, when I talk about movement. So it was much easier for me to develop that answer because I was already thinking of those different branches of science. So it's much easier to develop my answer. Also, to extend my answer a bit longer, just a bit longer, I just simply 
talked about my experience of studying science when I was a student, telling my examiner that science was actually my favorite subject because uh, it's just uh, interesting. Something like that. It's much easier to develop uh, that uh, answer because I have reference. Let's talk about pets and animals. Well, I think you just need some basic knowledge about warm-blooded animals or cold-blooded animals or the classification of animals that is vertebrate or invertebrate. Well, vertebrate animals are those with a backbone, while invertebrate animals don't have it. Now here, I want you to think of some examples of animals and learn their characteristics because these things can help you develop better answers. For example, let's talk about hyenas. Well, hyenas are warm-blooded animals and they are mammals. And in their clan, female hyenas are stronger than male hyenas. They act as leaders because basically female hyenas are more aggressive than male hyenas, which is completely different to other animals because normally it's always uh, the male or the male animals that are stronger than female ones. So these ideas can help you express yourself better and can help you uh, develop better answers. Then talking about pets. Well, we think of dogs, cats, or birds normally. And that's pretty fine. You can talk about those types of pets. However, what I think you should do is to be creative with your answer, especially if you're aiming for a higher band score. So if I get this question, what's your favorite pet? Well, I need to be creative with my answer so I can utilize my English communication skills more. And you know, I'm aiming for the highest band score, so I need to make sure I can express myself better. So my answer is like this. I love dogs because they are loyal animals. In fact, they are more loyal than humans. And you know what? I can't blame some people these days who decide to live with their pet dog instead of living with someone because their pet dog never uh, leaves them no matter what happens. See? That's creative, and I was able to express myself more. So I want you to uh, show your uh, ability, your English ability to your examiner, because if you do that, you will surely be able to get the highest band score. You have to convince your examiner that you deserve a band 7 or more. Let's talk about colors. Well, of course, you know, primary colors, secondary, and tertiary colors. What I think you should do in order for you to express yourself more is to basically understand some meanings of colors. For example, I have here red. It means passion, energy, and danger. Green, we have wealth, nature, growth, and harmony. And black, we have elegance sophistication, and power. Now here, once you know the meaning or the meanings of some colors, it's way much easier for you to express yourself. It's way much easier to develop answers in a more creative way because basically you have a guide. For example, if my examiner asks me, what's your favorite color? I can answer like this. Well, I love green because it symbolizes nature. You know what? The majority of my clothes in my wardrobe are color green. And the entire bedroom of mine is color green as well. I don't know. For some reason, I feel so calm and refreshed whenever I see green. Something like that. So just try to be more creative and think of those meanings of those colors so those meanings can definitely help you develop a better answer. Next is shoes. Well, this is actually the topic that I got when I took the actual IELTS speaking test. So we have to know some different types of shoes. How many types of shoes do you know? If you know a lot, then that's great. Okay, now here, 
it is very important to know the different types of shoes so we can provide some topic vocabulary to our examiner. Remember, we need to target the criterion uh, a lexical resource. That's your vocabulary knowledge. Okay, now here. Some types of shoes are loafers, um, sneakers or trainers. What else? Hiking boots, uh, brogue, stilettos, and many more. Knowing these types of shoes can help you focus on describing the kind of shoes that you like because basically you have reference. So if you aren't familiar of the different types of shoes, you have to review them. Let's talk about the weather. Well, I think this is one of the easiest topics in the IELTS speaking exam because basically the weather is part of our everyday life. So the easiest way to think about or to talk about the weather is to think about the four seasons, summer, uh, winter, spring, and autumn. However, for some countries, especially my native country, only have two seasons. So for them, they can easily talk about the weather because they don't have to think of other seasons. But anyway, so some words that we can use when we talk about the weather. So if it's summertime, we say um, dry, warm, hot, humid. If it's winter, we have bitter cold, wintry, and freezing. If it's springtime, it's damp, rainy, and foggy. And if it's autumn, we have, what, uh, what do you think? Uh, blustery, uh, calm, and chilly. So try using some of these words. Now let's talk about handwriting. This topic is difficult if you lack the vocabulary to describe your handwriting and if you don't know uh, the types of handwriting. So two common types of handwriting we have print handwriting or block lettering and we have cursive handwriting. So cursive simply means a handwriting style in which all the letters in a word are connected. So take a look at the examples. Also, have some knowledge about understanding the handwriting of a person. For example, if a person writes in big letters, he usually has a big personality. And if a person writes so beautifully, he usually is a creative or an artistic person. Something like that. So these ideas can help you formulate better answers. So try to know some different characteristics of a person through his handwriting. Let's talk about headphones. Well, I find this topic easy as well because every now and then we use headphones, like when we are listening to music or when we are attending an online conference call. So what I think we can do here is to learn some topic uh, topic words. For example, we have over-ear headphones. So these headphones are normally bulky and these are the headphones that we wear on our head. Another one is on-ear headphones or what we call earbuds. Now you may wonder, are earbuds headphones? Well, when we look at the meaning of earbuds, it says, earbuds are very small headphones worn inside the ear. So earbuds are another type of headphones. Well, I already answered all the questions about headphones on my website. So please spend time checking that out. You will learn so many things there. Next, getting lost. Such an interesting topic. Well, do, do people still get lost these days considering the fact that we already have GPS and Google Maps? You know, these things can definitely help us locate the place very easily. But anyway, some expressions that you can use when talking about getting lost, we have um, no sense of direction and we have uh, stay on the walking trail or tracks. Stay on the walking tracks, especially if you're talking about hiking. So in order for you not to get lost in the mountain, you have to stay on the walking tracks, something like that. 
And if you are describing your feelings when you are lost, you can use the adjectives disgruntled, confused, helpless, and anxious. Let's talk about spending time with others or spending time with people. Well, I find this topic easy as well because we human beings are social animals. You know, we need to interact with people, we need to build relationships with people. Of course, we need to cooperate with um, other people uh, in order for us to survive. Just uh, think about your experiences when you spend time with people. How did you feel? Talk about your feelings. Um, relate the questions to your experiences. Well, maybe if you're an introvert, you may feel uncomfortable or you're having a hard time articulating your thoughts with other people. If you're an extrovert, you definitely enjoy spending time with people. You are alive. You are so energetic. And if you're ambivert, well, both like you enjoy spending time with people. You're happy spending time with other people. And at the same time, you always find time to uh, spend time on your own just to recharge yourself. So these words, introvert, extrovert, and ambivert, can definitely help you formulate more ideas and can surely help you create better answers. So try researching more on these three words. They can surely help you when talking about spending time with others. Hi, my ebooks are currently on sale. So if you're interested to get a copy, just send me an email. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to support me, just give me a like or subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting videos related to IELTS speaking. Don't forget to watch the videos that appear on your screen right now because they can surely help you. Until next time, have a lovely day. Bye.